one week before deadline. Now, I don't know how detailed I'm going to be here. I'm giving you a lot of thought more than I'm giving you a lot of review here. Because, let, let's make this clear. I did my review on Raw. And thank you for anyone who watched it. Because I'm surprised anybody watched it more than 50 people. And it was like 100 something the last time I checked. I don't know what the number is now. I think it was 120 when I last saw it. Which is higher than what I normally would get for Raw. But it was because of CM Punk and Randy, Randall Keith Orton. I always mess up Randall, Randall's name. Or Randy as many people would call him. You look at Raw compared to this NXT. One week before deadline. Honestly, if I compare this show to what I saw on SmackDown or Raw, it's better. It's better. This show is better one week before their pay-per-view. When it came to Survivor Series, Raw the week before it actually happened was okay. It wasn't great. Then SmackDown was abysmal. It was not good at all. We gained nothing to give hype. Other people tried to say it was hype. No, it wasn't. And when it came to Survivor Series itself, if there was no CM Punk, if there was no Randy Orton showing up, it was B quality. Maybe. Maybe. B plus. And I'm telling you, with them there, it was B plus easily because they made it extra. But it was B, maybe under. Maybe C plus. I'm sorry. Even with the with the war game matches, it was easily, it could have been a C plus show. It could have been a good, okay show. But it wasn't a great show. Once Randy and, and CM Punk got there, it was a B plus, which is a very good show. But that's what it was. But when I see this show here, I see the show before Deadline. Do I feel hyped for Deadline? Yes. I feel the hype for Deadline. Now, I'm not going to tell you it's like here. It's here. This is average. This is above average. This is top. You got it here. That's not bad. Honestly. And I'm kind of surprised about that. Let's open with the tag match. And I knew, let, let's make this clear. This was a throwaway match. Honestly, it was. I think they just wanted to get it over with. And that was the family versus Angel Garza and Alberto Carrillo. They could have left this for deadline, but they chose not to. They just wanted to get it over with. It was not about if the match quality was bad. It wasn't. It was a fine match. Actually, I didn't mind seeing that the family got their asses kicked beforehand. But I'm not going to lie to you. We already know the family won. But here's the thing for me personally. where It was a good match, but you built up a story. You built a story showing that Carrillo and Garza were willing to do anything against the underboss and Don. They were willing to attack them. They were willing to harass them. Willing to do anything. I would have thought they would have made this at deadline. I would have thought they would have done this at deadline. Unless they get another shot at it, which I don't see them doing. This was a throwaway match. That means one of two things. One, the family will have another set of contenders now. Someone you're not going to expect. Or two, the family's not really going to be wrestling at all. We're not going to see Tony D'Angelo or, or Stax even wrestle. That's one of the two things. And that upsets me. Because one, you could have built up into Deadline. And two, it just feels like they deserve better. They deserve someone to deal with. But that's just me. We got Jerry the King Lawler. Setting up the two matches that we're going to have for the last of the official I Am Survivor challenges. But we are getting a one more chance type of match next week for the men and women. There's going to be four people, I believe, in each match. Or is it going to be like a gauntlet? I don't remember. Either it's going to be similar to a gauntlet. Or it's going to be like a fatal four or, or possibly four-way match for the men or women. Well, for men and women. I can't remember which one. I don't. So you could leave it below telling me if it's going to be a gauntlet or not. Because I think it might be a gauntlet. But my guess is it could be a... No, I think it's going to be a gauntlet. I think each one of them is going to have a gauntlet match. I think. Now, this qualifying match is for Keanu Jordan and Keanu James. I, I'm... 
Let me give it to you like this. Do I believe James is a superior wrestler compared to Jordan? Yes. Do I believe she's been more well-developed? Yes. Do I believe she did good in the Iron Survivor Challenge last year? Hell yes, she did. But for some crazy reason, they want to have Keanu James lose because of what's going on with Roxanne Perez and because Roxanne got interfered with because of her. I'm like... You have nothing for Roxanne Perez. And instead of moving her to the main roster, which pretty much she's ready. At least ready enough to be good. And look, she's a small woman. No matter how you play it, she's going to always have some type of disadvantage on the main roster. They got bigger women. Natalia's bigger than her. You got Maxine, Maxine Dupree is bigger than her. Hell, the person that's practically the same size as her, but even stronger than her, will be, guess who? Nikki Cross. Nikki's roughly about the same height as her, but she's a bigger woman, a stronger woman. So that's the only woman she can really change next to Alexa Bliss or whenever Alexa comes back or when, um, well, Liv Morgan. I don't even know where Liv Morgan is. Is she still, I think she's still injured or she's just sitting in the back. I just don't know. But essentially, they want to do it with that. And I'm like, why? Wouldn't it have been better just to move her away from this the last match she had, they could have just moved her off the roster and tried to do something. I guess maybe they might be doing some dark matches. Maybe. Maybe dark matches. I'm doing this because maybe. But that's just me. But let's move on to the next Iron Survivor Challenge. Braun Breaker versus Eddie Thorpe. Now, Eddie Thorpe already got his butt kicked by Drew, by... Damon Kemp, and by Charlie Dempsey. I had to think about it for a minute because they weren't there. There was nothing there for them to do. I mean, I mean, they, they didn't come out. They didn't harass him. And they didn't come out once he got his butt kicked by a brawn breaker who I knew was going to kill him. I knew it was going to kill him. There's no way they're going to let him job to an Eddie Thorpe. And understand, I like Eddie. He's shown a little bit more of his heritage, a little bit more personality. It's not a lot, but at least it's better than it was when he first started. He just doesn't want to go down the Native American route getting dressed in garb, which I don't want him to. But there's nothing wrong with showing more aspects of your heritage. Showing more aspects of when, like, I understand for maybe some, some tribes, they used to hop up. And if I remember correctly, that's a small building that's set up so you can do vision quests. I wouldn't mind him following something like that if his tribe does that. Or even if they don't, he could still use it. Something of his heritage more and more showing himself, which doesn't have to be full garb, clothes, having the pipe, having the headdress. It doesn't have to be that way. I just feel like he could do more. That's just me. He did lose, but then Kemp didn't come out. Charlie Dempsey didn't come out. Drew Gulak didn't come out. Nobody did after he got his butt kicked. So what now for him? Nothing. Let's move on to the match that was set up due to the fact that, well, he was ousted about him living. Well, I shouldn't say that much. I'm living by myself. <laughs> But I'm not living by myself and my wife, if I was still married, was living away from me and my son was living away from me. If you were like working on a oil rig or working overseas, like with Japanese culture where the husband or the wife is literally away 90% of the time and the other parent and child doesn't even see them, but maybe once every few months or a year, that's what they're trying to compare to. So... Seeing that the guys in the back were talking about whose life is better because Dragunov is not with his family. He didn't tell his wife to come to America. He's here by himself. He does probably um, Discord or Zoom calls. Not many people do Skype, guys. There's some that still do. The boomers do. I'm not a boomer. I'm a Gen X. I'm not Gen Z. And I'm not Gen Y. I am Gen X. We didn't have none of that stuff. We had the phone, maybe. But essentially speaking, 
seeing that he has to do that. And Baron Corgan got his wife. He's got his kids. He's got a big house. And it was Axanon and um, Nathan Frazier that were talking about it. And they said, I respect that Elio's doing this, but if I had to choose the type of life, i choose Baron Corbin. And that's when Elio found out and he didn't like what he said. He said, look, and this is Frazier. He said, look, I, I respect you. I respect what you're doing, but I wouldn't want to live like that. And 99% of the people here don't want to either. To be away from my kid, that's the, and to do it over, over a screen is not what we like. And the moment he heard that, he said, you know what? You're right. But guess what? I want to take out some frustration. I'm going to take it out on you. Good match. It was a good match. Seeing that Dragunov, and let's make it clear, and this is what I'm worried about. If Dragunov is ever sent to the main roster, we will lose what Dragunov is right now. I'm telling you right now. Because when you see Dragunov, the way he works in the ring, there is no way in hell he's going to be allowed to keep up that type of style. I'm sorry. Look what happened to the Irish ace, J.D. McDonough. He was incredibly vicious, destructive, but guess what happened when he worked with Judgment Day? All that went away. All of it. No matter how much you say, oh, J.D. is still a great wrestler. It's not the point of him being the greatest wrestler from Ireland. He literally is not doing what he did in NXT. What made him so dangerous as the dragon because he was known as the Dragon too. Other than the Red Dragon of Ilya Dragunov, we also had the Dragon. He doesn't exist anymore. He's basically been wiped away. And now most of the time, on and off, he gets his ass whooped or he's comic relief. Tell me I'm wrong. But this match was good. But like I said, seeing this may not last forever unless he stays on NXT permanently. He moves in May roster. You will not see this Dragunov like this ever again. You will not see him. Even the H-bomb will not be allowed to be used. I'm sure of it. Particularly in Nathan, Nathan Frazier's case, he A-bombed him not once, but three times to teach a lesson to anyone to keep my name and my child out of your mouth. Three straight H-bombs to the jaw. Good move. But in the end, once Corbin comes on screen and... Pretty much makes it clear that, look at me, look at you. You dedicated everything to that title to make sure not only that you keep it, but also take care of your family. But obviously, you're by yourself in your home. You got nothing. You got that title, you may take care of your family, but you have nothing. And look at me. I got my wife, I got my kids, I got my home. I have them all here. I got everything I want but that title. And when I take it from you, you will finally have nothing. And you'll be able to go home. In fact, I will upgrade your ticket to go home. When you go home, I will give you first class and upgrade your damn ticket. But you're going to learn that sacrificing so much to have this comes with a price. And I'm going to give you that price. That's what he was saying. Now, i got to tell you this. I liked what he said. And trust me, Corbin is not one of the best guys who does promos. He just isn't. But he did it well enough that it not only relayed what he needed to say, but the emotion to it. He's trying to antagonize and anger Dragunov. But he's also trying to justify his own attitude, saying, look, I got everything. I earned everything. I'm entitled to everything because I bust my ass. I did. And what have you done? You sacrificed everything. I made sure everything is here. You sacrifice this and make sure your family's not here and you're all alone in a, in a room, probably drinking something alone after you see your kid and say hi. I don't need to do that. I can go next room. Say hi to my kids. Kiss my wife on the cheek and say, honey, I want to have some fun. And she says, all right, let's go. How are you going to do with your wife? <laughs> I'm just saying that, but that's what he was trying to relay. Next. The match that was like, hmm. I don't know what's going on. First, we have Ariana, Grant, uh, Ariana Grace. I know they want to push her. It's obvious. Then we have um, Carmen Petr Petr um, Pet Petr 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 Pet
Petra, Petrovic. There you go. I think that's her name. Carmen Petrovic. I think that's her name. I could be wrong. But she trying to feel like a Kill Bill type of character. Let's make it clear. Back Mamba, she is not. Yet, yeah, she's blonde like her. Yet, yeah, she's a third degree black belt like her. But does she feel like Una Thurman? No. She does not feel like Una Thurman. She does not. But that doesn't take away from her skill. And doesn't take away from pretty much the character she's trying to relate. But she doesn't feel like it completely. Because when you see her in the ring, she's more of a martial artist than she is a pro wrestler. And that's the problem. For me personally. As a martial artist. When she's got to show it. No problem. Character wise. Trying to be like Black Mamba. She has some of that. And can develop it. Because she's trying it. But when she goes in the ring. No. Ariana Grace feels more. Like a pro wrestler. Who was once a pageant winner. Compared to Pekovic and she trying to be less of a martial artist because she's kind of going in the, the same style as Sorika as well as Kiana Jordan. Martial arts, pro wrestling. That's what it looks like. More like this than should be like this. It should not be like this. It should be make sure you have a little bit of a balance, almost near balance. Have a little bit of what originally brought you in. And when you develop more and more, you can scale it back. Sometimes switch. But then you can always go back. Here, it's this. And I'm not feeling her. She's beautiful. She can wield a sword pretty damn well. That shows her martial arts training is very good as a third degree black belt. Taking nothing from her. Seeing her do her high kick and a thrust kick and a flying kick. Perfect. But this is pro wrestling. Pantomime, not martial arts, more of the same. It's like doing it's 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 like doing amateur wrestling too much. Look, you gotta scale back even amateur wrestling compared to pro wrestling. Sometimes you gotta have a balance of how pro wrestlers work compared to amateur wrestling. Even Damon Kemp still has that look of an amateur wrestler that is more orientated to an amateur wrestler and not scale back enough to feel like a pro wrestler. That's just me. And then Joe Gacy. Is he now with Ariana? A Ariana? Ariana? Is he helping her? He stole the damn bell and he was under the ring like, like Hornswoggle. He was under the freaking ring like Hornswoggle. We thought he might have jumped off the... The supposedly jump off a building when they threw down the camera. And you don't know. Now he's under there like a gremlin. Like 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 a leprechaun. Hiding under the damn ring. Nice look under the ring, I will say. But then he comes out and grabs the damn bell and then rings it for her. Now does that mean he's working with her? I, I don't I don't know. I don't I don't know. I I I, I we did see Alva Rain sighting when she was talking to Roxanne Perez about the second chance next week and that she doesn't want Keanu James to get it but Keanu James is going to get another shot and then they started fighting one another but then it's like I don't know finally oh we got two more matches let's make it clear Lexus King versus A. Jensen um Brooks Jensen and let's make it clear he was meant to lose automatically because there's no way they're going to let Lexus King lose to him. The question is, because we did see the video footage of Lexus King following Trick Williams inside the building after he managed to get into that match, which he couldn't do because he got his butt kicked and had to go to the hospital. As far as anyone's concerned, supposedly Lexus King is the one who did it. But as you see how Trick and Mello were acting while watching the match, Mello wanted to mess with... Lexus King, and my feeling is this, this is what I still think, Lexus King did not attack Trick, Carmelo did, Lexus King is doing a favor for a Carmelo Hayes because he thinks he can get somewhere with Carmelo Hayes, that is what I'm thinking, I'm thinking Carmelo 
hired Lexus King to be his sidekick because now Trick Williams is no longer his sidekick because look what Trick said. Trick said while, while Mel wanted to get his hands around Alexis' neck, he says, I can't do that. I got to think ahead. I'm in the Iron Survivor Challenge. I can't just go off and do something like that. But he said, we're going to get him. He tried to mess with Trick Metal Game. So my feeling is that Mello thought this little bitch who I've carried and allowed to be by my side while I've been champion no matter what now wants to be off on his own. I'll get myself a new sidekick, fuck him up, and then make that sidekick think, well, everyone think that my sidekick did it so when the time comes, when I finally nail him because everyone else is not going to think it, It'll be great. That's what I'm thinking. Final match. The sort of one... Oh, the sort of number one contender. The reason I botched this is due to the fact of one thing. It would have been better if this was meant for all four of them. But they didn't want to do that. This was about a Wesley getting the shot to go up against a, a Dirty Dom one more time. If he loses the match, he can never touch the title again. Until Dom drops it. He does. He has a title shot at deadline. We got. Three video packages. For Cameron Grimes. For Johnny Organo. And Bronson Reed. All good. Once we got the match. There's only one person. <coughs> Excuse me. One person who shined the best. That was Bronson freaking Reed. Let's make this clear. Bronson Reed was the best one there, taking nothing away from Johnny or Cameron or Wes. Nothing away from them. But you see Bronson Reed in that type of match. He is not only a big-ass man, but he's a fast, agile man who's damn strong. He lifted all three of them on his back and did a damn Simone drop. He had to struggle, but he still managed to do it. But then I'm going like, there's no way they're going to make him win here. And how are they going to make him job without hurting him? And guess what? Ibar. Ibar shows up. They start fighting each other. And my feeling is one of two things. Either they're going to have to start having a best of seven between the two. Well, one. I think they're going to have a best of seven or a best of five series. Sooner or later. Then they're going to team up and be a tag team. Because Ibar has no teammate right now. But I have a feeling that they're going to make Ibar be, be a team player with Bronson Reed eventually. But I do believe it's going to be a best of five series. That's going to come from both of them, I think. In the end, West wins. I'm not surprised. There was no way they were going to let him lose. Now, deadline, we're going to have Dirty Dom versus Wesley. And the ending of the show is Keanu James and Roxanne Perez fighting one another in the parking lot. That's what we got. Now, was this bad? No. Was it better than Raw? Hell yes. Only thing that was different was there was no talk from Randy Orton or CM Punk on there. If you remove that equation, I'm making it clear. If you move a CM Punk and a Randall Keith Orton from the equation of Raw, they were not on Raw, and you compared the two shows flat out, guess, one, guess who's better? It's NXT. And it's still, as I told you, 101 booking, 101 wrestling stories, just basic. Triple H is doing the more extravagant long-term work, and Shawn Michaels is not. He's doing standard, very basic booking. It's obvious he is. There's no way he's not. Yeah, he throws a little bit of surprises in there, just like Triple H or Vince McMahon would. But he's doing it simply. And it's better. And I'm not even saying that I'm a huge fan of NXT. I review NXT, but does not mean I'm a huge fan of it. I like NXT. I still care about it, WWE. Why do you think I'm still watching Jey Uso? He's my boy. I wish he could have became the head of the table, but they wouldn't pull the trigger. AEW, I still care about. The one I think I care the most about is Impact Wrestling. I've been doing it for 11 years, other than WWE, constantly. I stopped doing wrestling reviews for WWE for years because I got tired of it. But Impact Wrestling, I've never stopped. 
It's very rare I don't do it either because I'm sick or I, I didn't have a chance to do it because either my computer had a problem or my internet had a problem. I've been reviewing Impact for 11 years, guys. So that's the one I love the most, even though they're not great either. But I do know the weaknesses of it and I love reviewing them. And I'm reviewing here. I don't hate it. I like NXT. But I'm not going to tell you it's the greatest show in WWE like it used to be. And even then it didn't make me happy how NXT was booked back then. Because let's make it clear. I'm making it clear. As someone who did used to watch it. The original Black and Gold might have had better booking. But if you were a real fan of WWE. You were going to get angry. Because guess what? It didn't make a difference how great Johnny Gargano worked with Tommaso Ciampa. It didn't make a difference about Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Ricochet, Asuka, or Liv Morgan. Let's say Liv at that time wasn't doing that bad. Or Bailey or Sasha. It made no difference because the minute they hit the main roster, everything went to garbage. That's why many people like myself who still cared about NXT quit watching it. Because why would you watch people you know are going to get buried? Now... They're not getting buried. But you see the product now as a corporation. And someone below asked me, what is going to happen with CM Punk? Is he going to get buried by the, the, the shareholders because he worked with AEW? No. They're not going to bury him. Making it clear. AEW, that type of dealings, they don't care. Shareholders only care about this. The only ones who would care that were shareholders all former pro wrestlers like Vince Kennedy McMahon, because he was a wrestler at one point, even though he couldn't wrestle, he was a character, he would be the only person. Triple H, he's not going to do that. Triple H knows 100% this is more important right now because we're no longer just WWE. We're TKO WWE. We can't do stuff like that. It messes with the bottom line and we got new shareholders and a new owner who doesn't want to play with that. Ari Emanuel doesn't give a damn about grudges unless it interferes with making money. That's the deal. Because if he did, CM Punk would never came back. Because there's more than a few people that Vince didn't like. And if CM Punk was one of them, he told Ari... Ari would say, no problem, he's never coming back. That's not how it works. But as I've said multiple times, guys, we don't know how long it'll be before they put someone in there who does not understand the wrestling business and only cares about business. You can say a lot about Tony Khan, but he loves wrestling. He's not great at it. He has issues, but he loves pro wrestling. We are still talking about people that know better than Ted Turner. That put people in those positions to keep wrestling going. But Ted Turner was a businessman, not a wrestling promoter. Got Triple H there doing creative. But what happened to Triple H isn't there anymore. And they stick someone in there that either doesn't understand wrestling or is just not caring about wrestling. What do you think will happen then? Peace.